Rockingham, Phoenix, Atlanta finish the year. Wallace and Earnhardt fighting for it. So 202 laps are now by gentlemen. As we take a look back up front on the field, we're past the 300 mile mark, 303 complete as Jeff Bodine makes mincemeat out of the field in the mellow yellow 500 at Charlotte, North Carolina. By now it's Bodine, Hoosier tires, Ford car, Exide number seven is flying and he's leading by three, call it three and nine tenths, just about four seconds over Dale Earnhardt in second. Take a look at the interval, back to the black number three. Then the interval disappears once you get the Dale Earnhardt there. Yeah. They're look right there. Look who's into third. Gordon's back in this race. Hendrick Racing, Jeff Gordon looking for Hendrick's fifth win here at Charlotte. And Jeff is the leading Hendrick driver at the present time with Dale Jarrett right behind him in fourth. Brett Bodine fifth. Ricky Rudd is in sixth. Sterling Marlin seventh. Schrader is eighth. Labonte ninth. Rusty Wallace cracks the top ten. He's back again as well. And Kenny Wallace seems to be fading. Kenny Wallace now back in 16th position, guys. He's been sliding back here over the past several laps. Yeah, he was staying in there 10th, 11th, and 12th pretty much most of the race, but all of a sudden he's fallen back a considerable distance. So, as a matter of fact, he's going to have to worry about going down a lap before too much longer. So, 209 are complete out here today. Race is past the halfway mark. If showers were to come now, Jeff Bodine would be very much in favor of seeing the red and checkers. For the rest of them, they'd like to find a way to get back up there. But Kale made the point. He is such an expert on chassis. But when others have trouble with tires, doesn't happen with Jeff Bodine. Here's the 28 car of Kenny Wallace back in 16th. And let's see if we can find out what the story is on that car right now. Down to the pits. Well, it's hard to tell from here. They're not going to bring him in, but they're saying possible broken valve spring. You see a lot of that at Charlotte with the high revs that these guys run. Mark Martin lost a lot more than that, but they said it's something like that, so it could even be worse for Kenny Wallace before this day is over. See right behind him, the Nemechek car, number 41, and that's where he's running on the track. There's Joe Rutman, who's had a terrific day. He's, he's a lap down. He's in 25th, but that's been a pretty smooth ride for car number 80. Congratulations to Joe. Yeah, you know, Joe hadn't been doing a whole lot of racing. You yep. know, he just runs uh, now and then, but he was he was a great short track racer in his day. He just came along a little late in Winston, in Winston Cup Series. And that team hasn't run a whole lot in Winston Cup either, so that makes it, uh, you know, double the, the mm -hmm. success, I guess. Mm -hmm. Going you know, around Travis Carter's car. Talking about these engine problems we're seeing today, if these teams are trying to pull the same old gear that they're so accustomed to pulling at Charlotte Motor Speedway, that could be part of the problem because that new asphalt is letting them run at their slowest around a 31 second flat lap. And that's a good full second faster than what the pace usually is here at Charlotte. And that, that equivalates to RPM and Absolutely. broken parts. Absolutely. You know, uh, there, there are a lot of people uh, turning these engines uh, higher today than they have in a long, long time here. But but you couldn't. Uh, some of them will go turn these kind of gears, run these kind of gears that you had to turn the kind of RPM to run. If the front wheelers do it, everybody else has got to do it too. Let's check in on where the point leaders are at the present time. Earnhardt in second. Wallace back in tenth. Martin retired 37th on the field. We've had only four retirees as opposed to about half the field yesterday. Take a look at this run as Jeff Gordon is going after Earnhardt. Dick Bergeron standing by in Jeff Gordon's pit. Yeah, and they've got the tomahawk bouncing up and down, Ken Squire. When that tomahawk bounces up and down, usually means the car's okay. Have you got her dialed in, Ray? Well, no, we're still bouncing back and forth. We're a little off balance, but we're getting better and better. Jeff's doing a great job in the car. That, that kid is a race driver, and these guys there in the pits continue to amaze me. They're making adjustments on the car and still getting it out in good fashion, so we're having a good day. I know Rick at home is not feeling real well, but hopefully uh, we can give him a little something to feel a little better about. I don't know, that seven car's pretty strong, but we're going to do the best we can. Remember in the spring when they kept adjusting and got better and better and better and wound up in victory lane? Four and two ten seconds. They're down right now. This trio to the leader Bodine as he continues to edge away from second, third, and fourth. 
as the pressure is being exerted by Jeff Gordon, of whom Rick Hendrick once said, for my future, he's the franchise. 219 laps in the rearview mirror, 328 and a half miles, and there are the current standings through the field as Bodine continues to build on his lead of well over four seconds from Dale Earnhardt now. And he's about to get a snoot full of uh, Gordon and Jarrett, Brett Bodine all in there. But there's the man they're all talking about. And take a look as we uh, watch this battle a little further back between Earnhardt, Gordon. That's a little bit of a distance. Now she's driving away. And the 24. Jeff Gordon flies, picks up Earnhardt. Earnhardt comes right back on the inside, his famous <laughs> classic move. For second place, even across, a couple of Chevys going at it. I tell you, Dale Jarrett's car is working well, too, isn't it? He's, he's right in there, and he is really working good. Slides up. They want to get around the lap car of Boy Allen. And Bodine is back on pit road. Leader is in. This is lap 222. As Jeff Bodine eases down to pit road, and here's Randy. Crew chief Paul Andrews looks over his crew as Jeff Bodine brings the car to a stop. He said the car was getting a little tight at the end of that run. Shane Parsno on the right front and Leslie on the rear. The jack is Tom Mount. He's already around to the left side, underneath the X side board. Left side tires coming off. Pretty good pit stop so far. Four Hoosiers bolted on. Right rear done, and Jeff is down and away. Wallace is also in 19-6 on Bodine. Grabs a fistful of gear and gets her going. Earnhardt coming in in car number three. Jeff Gordon stays out. He takes the lead. Lap 222. Here's Dick Burke. Well, Earnhardt is entering his pit stop, and he slides to a stop. A little bit of the tape that they put on the nose of this car to try to fix it from the earlier crash is starting to flop around now. Andy Petrie, crew chief on the right front. There's David Smith with the jack. Turning around to the other side. Pump and a half by David Smith to get the car up. Earnhardt has dodged a bunch of bullets this summer, and this may be another one. He is running great despite that early crash. Earnhardt out. Rusty Wallace is pitted. Terry Levante, Ricky Rudd, Mike Wallace. And the 18 car is in. Jarrett and Reddy is in. Brett Bodine, Kyle Petty, Dick Trickle. All on pit road this lap 224. Leader on pit road, Jeff Gordon. The DuPont car, Jeff Gordon coming in. Chevy leading. This will put Sterling Marlin into first place. Looks like Jeff Bodine's pit stop was every bit as good as Dale Earnhardt's because he has every bit of lead that he had before the stops. Here's Dick Burton. Well, that was a hard stopper. As Gordon came in, he almost clobbered Kenny Schrader. There was a tire that rolled across. He is a little bit over his pit line. He's stuck outside the pit. That's our official standing there. They're apparently not going to do anything about it. He really had some problems just trying to get that car in. But so far, at least, despite those troubles, it is a nice, clean pit stop for Jeff Gordon. And slow, 23-1. Back out. That uh, getting crooked in the pit stall like that just kind of throws off the whole orchestra. <laughs> and it translates to losing a couple of pits, a couple of seconds on the pit stop. Rick Master been running 18th is pitted. He's back out. Sterling Marlin, who for a moment had the lead, is on pit road. Greg Sachs is in as well. Harry Gant has made his pit stop. Wholesale changes here, folks. All around 225. Second stop in a row under total green condition. Here's Morgan Shepard coming in, and for a moment, he had a fistful of the lead. October the 23rd, Rockingham, North Carolina. Next Winston Cup event. October the 30th, Phoenix, Arizona. That beautiful track of Buddy Joe's out in the desert. And then November the 13th, back to Atlanta to finish the 1994 Winston Cup season. Wood Brothers getting Morgan out in 21-6. Mayfield was in car number 98. We'll talk to Kale after that. Watch on. <laughs> How'd he do? 
Not average. <laughs> Could have not what we wanted. <laughs> Could have been a little better. <laughs> Waltrip in 17 inherits the lead. 228. 228 down, 342 miles. Just behind him, you see the five, Terry Labonte. He's pitted. Marlins just there as well. He's been on pit road. So if it gets to be a fuel contest, foxy old Darrell Waltrip's back in this thing, Cale. Yeah, Darrell they're, uh, they're always, for some reason, gets uh, mighty good gas mileage. And, and uh, I don't know. I doubt if it comes down to a fuel uh, fuel thing today. It's, it's a little bit too early to tell you anyway. But if it does, Darrell will be riding the hunt with it, I'll guarantee you. If he puts gas in his water bottle, there's three around 18. That's for a position. The 18 Walter. was ahead of him after the round of green flag pit stop, so Dale Jarrett must have had a very good pit stop. There's Brett Woodine right with him. Those three were together before the green flag pit stops. But Jeff Gordon's got a ways to catch up to him. He had a slow pit stop. Let's let's establish the field for you again. The cars that you're watching, Earnhardt is fourth, Jarrett is fifth, and Bodine is sixth. The leader is Waltrip, and Kenny Wallace, who also is out of sync, has come to second. Jeff Bodine third, and now Waltrip, the leader, is pitting. Here's the 17 in, and he pits way up at the top end of the pits. One of the very first pit areas is where he elected to bring that 17 to today. Kenny Wallace is dropping off the pace on the racetrack, entering pit road right now as well. So with Wallace in, that will put Bodine back in the lead. Earnhardt to second, Dale Jarrett to third, Brett Bodine to fourth, Rusty Wallace to fifth, and Jeff Gordon to sixth. 20.3, pretty good stop, and here's Kenny Wallace bringing the Robert Yates car in. Green flag stops for the second time. 231 is the lap we're on. 346 and a half of the 500 miles in the Mellow Yellow 500 have been completed here at the Charlotte. Welcome back to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. The Mellow Yellow 500 today on TBS. Great to have you with us as we get these views of this speedway from our advanced auto parts aerial platform today. In the second third of this event, and so far, it's been pretty much all Jeff Bodine. I want to introduce you to an old friend, Jimmy Hensley from Ridgeway, Virginia. NASCAR's equivalent of a top-flight backup quarterback. First of all, what put you out today? Uh, looks like we cut a right front tire down. Uh, we were struggling with pushing a little bit anyway with the uh, final lands forward, but, uh, you know, it was going to work that out and just never really got the opportunity. You stepped in this weekend for Randy LaJoy, who took a hard hit here. Do you stand along pit road with a clipboard under your arm, or do you put a help wanted ad in Winston Cup seat? Well, you know, I really came to Charlotte just, you know, trying to be seen, you know, just stay in touch, and, you know, unfortunately for Randy, you know, he did hit real hard Thursday, and I was able to fill in for him in the Grand National car, and uh, he's going to fill in for him today, you know, we just didn't have too good a day today. Well, you're the best at this, coming in on little preparation and making the car run real well. Let's take a look at some of the guys who are out here right now, Dale Earnhardt, Brett Bodine, battling toward the front of the pack. Think Earnhardt might have a shot at this thing today? Well, he's running real well right now. He looks like Bodine's running good, too, so, uh, you know, he's uh, out front, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. Tough to track down, Jeff. Jimmy Hensley, good luck. Hope you land something soon. Okay, thank you. Take a look at those pit times from these last green flag stops. Earnhardt with that 18-6. Bodine with a 19-6. You think it'd make a big difference. Here's what's happening on the track. Interval between first and second is now almost eight seconds. Jeff Bodine is really hitched up. Unless that car goes away, unless somebody has a little Merlin magic in their back pocket, he looks to be one that is going to be hard to cover. Now, Earnhardt has been fighting with Brett Bodine. Brett got by him. Earnhardt ran him down. Shot him down in the main straightaway, moved back around, took second spot. Brett stays third. But one of the biggest stories for the moment is just behind this pair. That's where Rusty Wallace is in fourth. And take a look a little further back. This is for eighth spot. Schrader is in eighth in car 25. And Ricky Rudd is right there as they lap Harry Gant. Number 82, and nobody lapped Harry Gant. The Hal Neum, Burt Reynolds car winning its first super speedway event right here at Charlotte where Harry's running his last event on this mile and a half. So the battle continues. Bodine is the man to beat, and you're riding with him right now at 180-plus in the main straightaway at Charlotte. 